Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's headlines, Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu says it would be good if Israel could enlist the help of moderate Arab countries for regional security issues and peace. French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabiou says he will travel to Israel and the Palestinian territories in June to try to revive the peace process. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif says he hopes Tehran and the P5 plus 1 would reach a final nuclear agreement within a reasonable period of time. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu said that it would be good if Israel could enlist the help of moderate Arab countries for regional security issues and the peace process with the Palestinians. In a briefing to political correspondents, Netanyahu said that he was constantly considering the idea of reaching out to the moderate Arab states in light of the changes that are happening in the Middle East. He said, however, that the Arab peace initiative from 13 years ago was out of date due to regional developments. Meanwhile, France's top diplomat, Foreign Minister Laurent Fabiou, said he would travel to Israel and the Palestinian territories in June to try to revive the peace process and persuade all sides to accept a French UN Security Council resolution that would set parameters for negotiations. Nous sommes pour une solution des deux États euh, parce que il y a pas, il faut assurer la sécurité d'Israël, c'est évident. Mais il n'y a pas de sécurité et de paix sans justice. Or, justice n'est pas rendue aux Palestiniens, il faut être clair. France recently handed a working document to Arab League countries in preparation of a Security Council resolution that would set a time frame and the exact parameters of a new peace initiative between Israel and the Palestinians. Et nous allons continuer. Je me rendrai euh, avant la fin de ce mois, à la fois en Égypte, qui joue un rôle très important, dans les territoires palestiniens et en Israël. Je discuterai avec les dirigeants de ces pays. Nous voulons qu'on reprenne la négociation entre les deux parties, mais que cette négociation soit encadrée par euh, un accompagnement international. Senior aides to the French top diplomat said the visit would take place ahead of a final round of nuclear negotiations between the P5 plus 1, the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain and Germany, and the Islamic Republic of Iran at the end of June. Now to the ongoing nuclear negotiations. Iran's top diplomat, Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif, said following a meeting with his Greek counterpart, Foreign Minister Nikos Kotsias, that he hoped Tehran and the P5 plus 1 would reach a final nuclear agreement within a reasonable period of time, but stressed that it would be hard if the other side stuck to what he called excessive demands. Well, I, I believe that if uh, the other side uh, respects uh, what has already been agreed upon uh, in Lausanne uh, in terms of the parameters for an agreement, and tries to uh, draft, based on mutual respect, uh, and a comprehensive uh, agreement with Iran that is sustainable, uh, that can be balanced, and that can be considered a dignified, mutually respectful uh, agreement, then we can meet any deadline. Uh, and if people insist on excessive demands, on renegotiations, then it would be difficult to envisage an agreement uh, even without a deadline. I am, am, I am hopeful that this will, in fact, reach a final conclusion uh, within a reasonable period of time. France warned on Wednesday that it was ready to block a final breakthrough agreement unless Tehran provided the United Nations nuclear watchdog, IAEA inspectors, with access to all installations, including military bases. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei last week ruled out international inspections of Iran's military sites or access to nuclear scientists under any agreement remarks which were later echoed by Iran's military commanders. As talks resumed in Vienna on Wednesday to bridge gaps in negotiating positions before the deadline set for the 30th of June,
The United States said it was not considering an extension, despite comments from France and Iran indicating otherwise. Zarif is scheduled to meet with his American counterpart, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, in Geneva tomorrow. Among the issues at stake are the pace of easing Western sanctions imposed over the Iranian program and the monitoring and verification measures to ensure Iran cannot pursue a clandestine nuclear weapons program. Now to Israel's northern neighbor Syria. Russian and U.S. positions on the war-torn country are getting closer. After several high-level contacts between Moscow and Washington this month over the bloody conflict, which according to the United Nations claimed the lives of more than 220,000 people. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said following a meeting with his United Arab Emirates counterpart Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan in Moscow that the mutual understanding between Russia and the United States is based on the realization that there can be no alternative to a political solution in Syria. <coughs> Мне кажется, сближаются позиции с Соединенными Штатами, прежде всего в том, что касается заявлений о безальтернативности политического урегулирования в Сирии на основе Женевского коммунике от июня 2012 года. Lavrov continued by criticizing Washington for supporting some of the armed opposition groups fighting Syrian President Bashar Assad, saying Russia considered this approach short-sighted. Meanwhile, in a special interview with the leader of the Al-Qaeda's Syrian wing, the Nusra Front, he said the main focus of his group was to capture Damascus and warn members of the country's minority Alawite sect to renounce President Bashar Assad and change their beliefs in order to be safe. The Nusra Front has made gains in northwestern Syria alongside other insurgent groups in recent weeks. Nusra's Abu Muhammad Al Jolani told Qatar's Al Jazeera television in a rare interview that their mission was focused on toppling the Syrian regime and warned all parties that supported it, including Lebanese Shiite group Hezbollah, which backs Assad. وهذا بغير تدخلنا في لبنان هذا من القوى الموجودة هناك في لبنان وأنا أدعو من هذه من هذا المنبر الكل القوى والأحزاب المتواجدة في لبنان أن تدرك ما أقوله جيدا وتدفع بهذا الاتجاه. His warning to Alawite villages and uncompromising language will do little to dispel Western fears about the growing influence of hardline insurgents in Syria and Nusra's loyalty to Al Qaeda. The Alawite community, of which President Bashar Assad is a member, is an offshoot of Shiite Islam. The Sunni Muslim Nusra Front is the most powerful faction in Syria, opposing both Assad and the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. The Nusra Front leader claimed his group was not at war with Christians, as their focus, right now, of fighting was directed solely at Assad's forces and Hezbollah. When pressing on the matter, he noted that all options were open. If U.S.-led forces continue to target it, they will retaliate against the West. In terms of the statements from Dr. Ayman Hafizullah, the statements from Dr. Ayman Hafizullah are the most important part of the government, the government, the government, and the government. فالتفاهم مع الفصائل اللي قامت حكم إسلامي راشد ينعمون به أهل أهل الإسلام ونحن الإرشادات التي أتتنا بعدم استخدام الشام كقاعدة انطلاق لهجمات غربية أو أوروبية لكي لا نشوش على المعركة الموجودة. Thank you for watching us. Frank for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan of Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time.